All right, guys, welcome back to another episode. If you're watching this, that clearly means I got another GoPro. Um, it took us a while uh, to figure out uh, when to get one, but this, this most recent Labor Day sale, I uh, ended up picking up a GoPro Hero 7 Silver 174 from the Navy Exchange. Uh, that's a crazy good deal, so we couldn't pass it up. Um, and then in the meantime, we also found out that the GoPro uh, Plus program that we were paying for, the subscription, is actually gonna help us replace the GoPro Hero 5 Black. So we have a session. We're gonna have a black here soon whenever they replace it. And now we have a seven uh, silver. So um, that's good news. I've also got the logo in the works. I've got a, a fellow teammate from FX working on a logo for me. I should have that this week. Um, and you'll start seeing that. I'm gonna start putting it in some, uh, some merchandise and uh, get it on the channel. But today, I got an order from Kevin Dismuke, and uh, as you guys know, I got the Hobie at the beginning of the year to try to help me out with my tournament series. Uh, pedaling or paddling everywhere wasn't really working out for me last year, so pedaling was the way to go, right? Uh, so I got the Hobie, and uh, you know, I've noticed that uh, one of the problems I'm having this year, uh, I'm still using a lot of energy getting to and from the spot, uh, especially trying to compete with torpedoes on the back of these kayaks now. It's almost impossible. Uh, to have the sustained performance to go out there and match them. Um, I don't have the money for a Torquedo, so I'm going with a Minn Kota uh, 35 for now. Uh, and I actually ended up mounting it inside of the Hobie uh, drive. So I ended up getting the cassette plug, I modified it, put it inside of there. Um, I made a video with my phone, but I don't think I'm gonna post that for you guys. It didn't turn out that well. So um, I only got it to three and a half miles an hour with that, with that Hobie plug. So I'm not impressed with that. So I bought a mount from Kevin Dismuke. Um, again, trying to save money. This is a budget channel, so uh, you know, show some some budget-friendly modifications. So Kevin sent me the mount. We're gonna go ahead and start getting this thing mounted up, and uh, I'll show you everything that you get with the package. I'll show you everything that we're gonna need to install it, and then in the next video, I will show you how I'm going to wire it up um, and try to clean things up a little bit. So without further ado, let's get into this video. So these are all the supplies. Um, we'll start out, we've got a drill. Obviously you're gonna need an electric drill. Uh, we got a couple holes that we need to drill, not in the kayak, but in some of the accessories. One of the accessories being the Hobie uh, accessory plate uh, for the H-Rail. Uh, even though this is not an H-Rail on the back, we're gonna use it like it's an H-Rail and it's gonna hold just fine. Uh, so we're gonna drill two holes in that. And then we also gotta drill two holes inside of the plate right here for uh, the cover to the rudder. Um, I'm eventually gonna end up looking at Bixby's uh, cover that they made. Bixby Jet uh, has a cover that they made so that you can mount a ball on the top. Um, I don't need the ball, but it's a mount that's a little bit higher and it won't interfere with some of the steering components inside of there. Um, next thing that came with the package was an actuator uh, so I can raise and lower the motor uh, while it's in the water. Uh, instead of tilting forward and tilting back, this will allow me to trim it out and hopefully increase speed a little bit more uh, for efficiency. So we've got that. And then here's the mount. Uh, the mount came with uh, two brackets with wing nuts. Uh, I've already got them sitting underneath of it uh, just for convenience right now. But these wing nuts is what's going to allow you to easily remove the, the, the track. So um, we're going to start measuring stuff out. We're going to try to make this as neat as possible and then get this on, try to get the actuator in there. Um, I'm probably not going to leave the actuator in there for tonight but I'm also gonna get the trolling motor and try to mount it inside of here uh, for the time being. Uh, we have the hurricane coming through, Hurricane uh, uh, Dorian. Uh, it's reaching Virginia today. Uh, well, later on tonight into tomorrow morning. Um, so I've gotta get this done because tomorrow it's supposed to storm all day long and I have a tournament on Saturday and I want this on there for Saturday. So let's get this thing measured out. Let's start getting working on this thing and then we'll see the end, end, the, the end product afterwards. So get to it. holes drilled 
you're worried about drilling into your kayak, um, putting a trolling motor on is probably not the best thing uh, for you. But luckily, uh, when Kevin designed this, he made it so that it's on a plate that's removable. So you're not drilling into your kayak. You're drilling on things that are replaceable. There's no holes going into this thing. So we're going to be good. I'm going to keep going. Uh, that seems pretty simple so far. We're going to try out the bracket, see where it sits. Eventually, I'm going to silicone or plastic weld these to the back of this plate. Uh, and the same thing to the back of the uh, Hobie mounting plate as well. But uh, for the meantime, just to get me going, I'm gonna try to speed through this and uh, just gonna try to clean it up as best as possible for the tournament on Saturday, so. Guys, I'm gonna drop the rudder and make sure I can still turn it. Um, I know that's that was a concern that was brought up by some other people, so. I'm gonna drop the rudder, make sure I can still turn it uh, with the steering, and then hopefully it still works. Good. This bracket is not hitting uh, any of the rudder components inside of the steering box, so uh, we're gonna keep plugging. We're gonna keep going on. Let's get going. By the way, if you're in Virginia, Appomattox River Company, best kayak company out there. Go check them out. size I'm using is a 930 seconds it's pretty simple it matches right up with the holes there's a bracket I'll show you this bracket real quick this bracket slides in from underneath right just like that it'll mount underneath of it and slide up into those holes so we're almost done mounting this thing already this isn't this is actually a really simple install uh, if you ask me these wing nuts so we got to mount it I'm gonna go grab the trolling motor uh, pull it out of the pod and uh, slide it up in here see if this thing will hold the weight uh, it definitely feels like it's gonna hold the weight and then we'll try to slide the actuator in uh, I got to find my my uh, socket set uh, so we can take these out and then slide that actuator in then we got to drill one hole the front uh, triangle part of the trolling motor and hook it up to the actuator and then we are done but this is basically the install guys that total time this is probably only taking me 15 minutes to put this thing on if that um, and it's gonna be faster uh, once I get done with the modification so I've already been looking at a, at a replacement for this hinge because whenever I get done I don't want to have to worry about you know pulling these wing nuts off I want these things to stay in place so I found a hinge um, that is supposed to be able to hold the weight but it's got pins, uh, little like a uh, squeeze pin and it squeezes and releases a latch from inside of the end pieces right and what it'll do is it'll allow me to pull this whole back part off right and uh, I'll be able to unplug the trolling motor plug from you know somewhere up here and the actuator plug, so I'm gonna run all the wires eventually through the hall up to the control box that I've made. So, but being able to do that and just pull this off and then when I get to the tournament, put it back in place, release the pins, and they'll shoot out. So, I don't know how strong that's gonna be. I'm gonna test it at home before I put it out on the water, obviously. I don't wanna be out on the water and turn around and my trolling motor and actuator be sitting at the bottom of the lake. That will not be a good day. So. Uh, let me get the trolling motor in here and let me make sure everything's gonna work work fine the motor just fine um, I'm gonna pull these bolts out real quick get the actuator up see if it holds both up just fine um, and then so one of the issues that I've got to figure out real quick is how I'm going to keep this stationary because as of this moment, this turns. So it will turn within this socket. And uh, I'm not trying to steer with the trolling motor. I'm going to steer with my rudder. Um, it was fine when I was steering with it when the motor was up front in the, in the Hobie hole. So um, I think we'll be fine. I just got to figure out how I'm going to do that. I think what I'm going to be doing is getting a... Uh, 
an attachment with a rod that comes out and will slide down through two holes. I'm gonna drill two holes in the bracket and it will slide down inside of there. And as I'm raising and lowering it, that rod is still gonna stay inside of that hole and uh, it will you know, lock it in place. So that's what I'm hoping. I gotta look at it. Uh, I gotta figure out how I'm gonna pull that off. But uh, let's get the actuator in there and uh, get this finished up because the storm is coming through and the wind is just picking up. And I'm not even sure if you guys are still able to hear me between the, the high winds and the lawnmower next door. So let's, uh, let's get this figured out. I'm gonna get a draw line hooked up to the top of the actuator. I'm gonna run it through the parachute or the, uh, the sail uh, loop back here on the Hobie and um, run it through there. Run it through another uh, pulley over here on the side, um, over here, and then uh, run it up, put it in a cleat, and call it a day. But uh, when I want to raise and lower it, that's how it's going to end up being. It's going to raise and lower just fine. It's out of the way. When I want to put it in, I'm going to release that cleat. It's going to fall down into place this is going to be stationary straight and this this cleat will be up actuator will be attached and this will lower with the switch from the actuator to the depth that i want it at and hold it in place and guys that is that is it this this install is is just simple um there's <laughs> i mean there's a lot of mounts out there that are that are you know there's been a lot of design uh, research and development that's gone into some of those mounts um, and they're great looking but uh, I can't afford a $400 mount uh, for a trolling motor so this is gonna work just fine I'm gonna show you guys a, a close-up of it um, just disregard the wires for the time being I'll show you guys how I'm going to wire it up in the next episode and get out on the water and then we'll do some speed tests. Uh, I've been all over the internet looking for um, some videos on a combination between a trolling motor or a Torquedo or a Bixby uh, combined with the pedal drive. And I thought I found it in Alex's uh, videos, but uh, he did not do that. So <clears throat> I'm going to put the drive in, the Hobie drive, the Mirage drive and uh, I'm gonna use the trolling motor at the same time, see what speeds I can get uh, on what percentage uh, throttle and how much effort I'm putting out up front. So uh, thanks for tuning in guys. Stay tuned for the next episode. Hope to see you guys back.